a new book from Dr. Richard Weikart, Hitler's Religion. What did this crazy man believe? And we concluded with the help of historian Dr. Richard Weikart, Adolf Hitler was not a lot of things, but we never answered the question, then what did he believe? Richard Weikart, his book, Hitler's Religion, you deny that he was an atheist, he was not an occultist, he was not a mystic, he was not a pagan, nor, according to Richard Weikart, certainly was he a Christian by any definition, frankly. Before you tell us what you, sir, have concluded about Adolf Hitler's faith, talk about three words that he used regularly in public speeches. The three words are God, nature, and providence. Why are these three words significant in understanding the faith of Adolf Hitler? Well, they're significant because uh, he uses them interchangeably in a lot of different contexts. So God, nature, and providence were words that uh, get used to mean the, essentially the same thing. Uh, and for instance, if you look at Mein Kampf, uh, his writing, but this also is, is through a lot of his speeches uh, and his private talks that he had and his monologues uh, and elsewhere, uh, he tends to conflate those things. Uh, and just to give you one example, one of the most famous uh, quotations from Mein Kampf is Hitler saying that by fighting against the Jews, I am doing the work of the Lord. I don't know how many times I've seen that quotation uh, in all sorts of writings about the Holocaust and certainly people trying to bash Christianity and claim that Hitler was a Christian. See, look, Hitler talks and said he was doing the work of the Lord uh, by, you know, fighting against the Jews. But if you look at the context of that uh, particular sentence, which hardly anyone does, uh, but which I do in my book, you'll find out that what he's talking about uh, in that paragraph is the what he calls the aristocratic principle of nature. That is the principle of nature that chooses the, what is good and best and highest uh, and weeds out what is uh, lower and inferior and negative and things like that. And of course, he sees the Jews as being one of those inferior races. Uh, and so he sees uh, him as doing the work of the Lord by doing the work of nature. And if you look at the very sentence just above that quotation, uh, Hitler actually refers to nature as being eternal. He calls it eternal nature, which means that it wasn't created at some point of time in the past by some god that's outside of nature. And he also refers to nature as having a will. In fact, he does that quite often. In, in Mein Kampf, there's quite a number of times where he talks about the will of nature, you know, nature um, having its own will. So, uh, these are uh, a number of ways in which he conflates and, and sort of identifies nature and God as being really one and the same thing. Based on everything you just said, would you agree or disagree with my phrasing in this sentence? Adolf Hitler's God was nature. Yes, I would agree with that. And I refer to that view as pantheism, which is a, a term that simply means that everything in the cosmos is God. Uh, and now there were different varieties of pantheism, I should say, too, that were around in Germany at the time. In fact, some scholars differentiate between, in fact, I came up with this idea even before I was reading this among some other scholars, that there were sort of what's called, what you might call scientific pantheism or naturalistic pantheism that tends very close to materialism, very close to atheism. But there were also more mystical kinds of pantheism around, too. And Hitler seems to uh, sort of pick and Hitler sort of sometimes seems mystical in sort of a mystical pantheism, uh, and sometimes more toward the scientific. I think he leads to more the, toward the scientific side mostly, uh, but there are other times when he does seem to think that nature has this independent will, which is again a more mystical kind of notion of pantheism. The, the difference between those two, by the way, would be that the scientific pantheists would say that you know. God is just another name for nature, and nature just operates by impersonal laws, and so scientific laws are what the will of nature is. In fact, Ernst Haeckel, the most prominent Darwinian biologist uh, in Germany in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, uh, whom I discuss in the book a good bit, Ernst Haeckel uh, called himself a pantheist, uh, but he even himself admitted that that was pretty close to atheism uh, at times. And so it's sort of like the pantheism sometimes was just a sort of polite name. In fact, Schopenhauer actually said this, that it's just a polite name for atheism. However, there were other pantheists who took a more approach that the will, that nature could have some kind of independent will that's sort of outside. So Hitler has this uh, notion that, that uh, nature or providence 
uh, can maybe foresee things and make choices uh, at times. And for instance, when he uh, when he survived some assassination attempts, Hitler would talk about how Providence had saved him. And I, I think he was being sincere. There. I don't think that was just for public consumption, although it was for public consumption too. Uh, but I think he really thought that that God, his God or Providence had chosen him for this special mission uh, that he had. And I think that's one of the reasons that he drove so hard and thought that he was going to get rescued even all the way down to the end. Today's word is conflation. Adolf Hitler interchanged three words, God, nature, and providence as if they were the same thing, uh, drawing the conclusion that Adolf Hitler's God was nature. That's right. Adolf Hitler was a pantheist. Adolf Hitler believed that God was in everything, had some impersonal rules, and he believed he was square in the center of nature's will. If you do not know how to help somebody who is struggling with emotional issues due to infertility, sexual abuse, miscarriage, self-harm. You will if you get tried by biblical counseling too.